Hello, I'm Cameron, the rector of St. John the Divine Anglican Church, serving the Sea to Sky. I come to you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. Today's service is for Harvest Thanksgiving, and I am so thankful for all of you who are joining us today for this time of prayer and worship. Before we get started, though, let us just take a pause, a moment to really uh, arrive so that we are ready to gather together, even though we're apart, for this time of prayer. So I invite you to close your eyes and let's take a few deep breaths together. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out all those things that might be troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God and keep on breathing until you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. The trumpet sound the angel sing the
Let us pray. Gracious one, you satisfy the need of every living creature. Fill us with gratitude for the abundance of the earth and for the bonds of love and care that unite all creation into one family. May our thanks be the soil in which dreams of justice grow and thrive. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, the Lord of the harvest. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our psalm is Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they with whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house and by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might you still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous, marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust, dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges with heavy rain as you soften the grounds and bless its increase. <clears throat> you crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. 
May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Our second lesson is from Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will pro produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he called. He said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? 
was none of them found to return and give praise to God except the stranger? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. Hello. Uh, I would like to welcome a special guest today for our, our sermon today. Uh, the Reverend Ken Vinyl uh, is an Anglican minister living up in Whistler, originally from the Episcopal Church uh, in the United States in Florida, uh, where he was a chaplain, a school chaplain, and uh, is coming up to 25 years of, of ordained uh, life. Right. That's amazing. December. Yeah. Uh, also, just for full disclosure, this is our second take of this uh, because we uh, did not realize that the technology died. We're so grateful that we have this technology to be able to connect during this time, but uh, sometimes it just, it'll do that to you, won't it? So uh, I'm sure this will be just as good as our lovely conversation we had uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, I wonder, just to get started, Ken, if you could uh, just open us in some prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for this time together, for our lives, for all the good gifts that you do give to us. We thank you for the opportunity to study and discuss your word, to reflect upon your mighty acts, and most importantly, the gift of your Son, of Jesus, to us. Mm -hmm. We ask that you bless this time and bless us. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to get us started, I would just like to ask, um, what stood out to you? What, do you? what did you notice? This is a story that we're familiar with. And so uh, this time around, as you read it and prepared, what, um, what was resonating with you? Um, the, the first thing is, is that um, the, this idea that, 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 that the, the central character here is the this, this Samaritan who's a, a leper. And I think of that because, you know, this is a, first, as a Samaritan and a leper, this is a double outsider. Um, he is an outsider because of religious reasons, and he's an outsider because of, he has this disease that has put him and these other nine people um, living essentially on the city dock outside, outside the town limits. Um, and, and so it is within this that this is the person with whom we are held up to as an example. Um, and it is because of it, it is very typical of the gospel, you know, the, the, with Luke. This Luke is the gospel of the outsiders, the gospel of, as we see in the very beginning of the Song of Mary, which she says, you know, that, you know, that uh, God is going to be casting down the mighty and lifting up the lowly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is an example of that, where the one, you know, the, the world's turned upside down, the one you don't expect to be the hero, the one you don't expect to receive God's grace is the mm -hmm. one who is. Um, and the other is, as you know, is this Jesus, uh, is this his action, you know, that he uh, comes and there he offers this unmerited grace to this group of lepers. You know, what did they do to deserve it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, and the other is, is it, what's the cost of this? And you know, Jesus is talking to lepers and he's talking to a Samaritan, but that he is on his way to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. on his journey to his death. You know, and imagine that when we are sitting there realizing that we're on the journey to our death, the last thing you know I'm going to think about is what's going on in the city dock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that's where his attention is. But, mm -hmm. And then um, it's the response mm -hmm. to God's action. Um, and, uh, and that rhetorical question that Jesus asked about were there not 10, it's mm -hmm. really in a sense, I think I, I 
sense that, and that is a question for us. That's the audience's question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, very Luke, Lucan in that, and that that idea of uh, here's an here's an action of God. How are you responding to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I think for me, the thing that really jumped out is you know I like how you said the double outsider, both because of um, the leprosy, but also because uh, this man's a Samaritan coming to the Jewish Messiah, and there is the uh, a history of enmity uh, between between these sort of these groups. Um, and so, yeah, so I was just really thinking about or noticing that uh, that area, that region between Samaria and Galilee. So this this uh, this in between place with people who are enemies on either side. Um, and just thinking about or wondering, I was wondering about the rest of them, is this a group of Samaritan lepers or is it a group of Jewish Galilean lepers or is it a mix? And just when uh, when we were reading it this time, I just noticed that um, Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priests, the plural. And so I wonder if that indicates that, that it is this mixed group of, of people uh, and just how amazing that is <laughs> perhaps the only place in this society where people might mix like this right is because of this um, hardship because society pushes them out and there's nowhere else to go um, but together um, and it, yeah so these people that Jesus comes to and speaks and works God's uh, works God's uh, healing and, and wholeness. So, yeah. So, uh, so this reading is like a, a, one of the readings, the election chosen for Harvest Thanksgiving, which is uh, today. And uh, so, hopefully, that this 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 reading is telling us something about. Gratitude or Thanksgiving, uh, and so I wonder. I wonder, Ken, what do you think this might be telling us about gratitude or Thanksgiving? Well, the well, first of the words that are used in, in the in the Greek there that with what the, the Samaritan does is the Eucharisto. The, mm -hmm. So where did we get Eucharist from? The Thanksgiving, uh, and so this isn't so much a story about a physical healing as it is about living a life of thanksgiving, living a life of faith. You know, going back to that, you know, the end of the story, Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. That word well in compass could be translated well. Uh, your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. And so we have wellness, wholeness, and salvation all caught up into one. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so, the, and again, and with connected again with Thanksgiving, because the reality of it is, a life of faith is a life of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. a life of gratitude. Um, that we exhibit that, you know, and, and really, that's true. This, what does it mean to be a Christian? Is to mean live a life of gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, and there, that's you know, again, it's the simplest form. And then, because you know, what is that? Um, but I think, again, that the Samaritan, you know, when you go back to the story, they weren't healed when Jesus said, you know, when they asked, it said they were healed on their way. And I, mm. and I you know, you love the, the economy of the language here. You know, we have this, this period of time. And, and you know, I think in, in one sense you think it's all happens that they, they turn around, they take a few steps and they're, you know, or, or a few more around the road or whatever. And so they see it. But. You know, this could have been a 30-minute time period. Mm -hmm. There could have been this allowance of Jesus, you know, that to go, not, not a big, this isn't a big city, it's a little, a little town. It may have been half an hour mm -hmm. before they came, you know, and, and we, we, we plenty of time to go show yourself to the priest and come back. Mm -hmm. But so there's this gap. Mm -hmm. But I, I sort of like to picture this, this these 10 people going and running and very excited and, and looking down and realizing because leprosy is a, this is a disease of the skin mm -hmm. um, and they look and see you, know, you can imagine it 
covering your arm and looking at it, and the Samaritan sees this and realizes that he is now changed. Mm -hmm. And so it's like when so the, when things happen to us, when an event happens, before we respond, there's this gap of time. Mm -hmm. And that gap is usually very short. But that is where we have all of our freedom. It's where, where, where the you know, critical decisions are made and, and freedom of response. Yeah. And so you can imagine whatever was going on with the Samaritan. Again, I, again, if anybody had a reason to be bitter, he did as mm -hmm. being, again, the double outsider. Yeah. Who knows how long he had been living on that city Um But in that moment... As that event of healing occurs, mm. he is to respond. And as the story tells us, nine response was to go about who knows where. But for him, he is fundamentally changed mm. and his chooses a response of gratitude, of thanksgiving. Mm. And it, and he turns and returns and and gives thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. And you think of our, you know, again, our very, you know, our very opening, um, the, our Eucharistic prayer, you know, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. you know, that, 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 that's the essence of right there, the Eucharistic life, the life of faith. You know, mm -hmm. we are giving our, it is right. I, I, I'll go up. It's one of the times I do like the right traditional language. It is meat and right, you know. Mm. It is, it is, it's, it's what we do. That's what we, what do we do in response as we give our thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just love that idea that a life of faith is a life of thanksgiving, a Eucharistic life. Yes. Um, I love um, that it is, and I don't think you use this word that right here, but sort of this posture uh, of, of gratitude or thanksgiving, um, and I, I just sort of am drawn to this very physical posture that the Samaritan, the, 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 the healed Samaritan has that where he prostrates himself, a, a very physical posture that reflects a posture of the heart. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I love that this is, uh, where he might, he's changed. And I, and I also wonder if, uh, this gratitude is, was something that he practiced even before. Uh, it's just and we don't know. Yeah, and so I just like to to imagine. I wonder if even as someone who was a double outsider, if he was cultivating this in his own faith faith uh, faith life, um, while he was uh, perhaps some people would think that he didn't have very much to give thanks for anyway. Uh, if this if the, there was something that planted seeds to this turning around. And returning to give thanks. I have a friend, um, and anytime I've talked to him, he uh, he has this uh, habit. Yeah. First thing in the morning he does is he lists off five things he's grateful for. And so anytime yeah. I've talked to him, he goes, "Ken, what are you grateful? Give me your five gratefuls." <laughs> um, but he's incorporated into his life that this attitude is, you know. The, to be grateful for things and for what is going on. Yeah. And he goes, it can be anything, it can be that, you know, he, the, the blue shirt in your closet. Yeah. You know, and he goes, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be grand, it's simply, but to see, it's this reorienting ourselves to mm -hmm. seeing the world through this lens of thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, a life of faith, of being grateful for what is and what you have and where you are and even being grateful simply for the breath that is within us mm -hmm. which is indeed as we know again from our you know, biblical sense is our gift from god yeah the first gift from god is mm -hmm. our you know, our breath yeah and a, a gift unmerited and totally a gift. Just a free yeah. gift right us. i am alive which is a gift and and and, and uh um so, you know, you, you, when we have that, this understanding, you know, of, of that, and I think if you something you want to practice, a very practical sense of just simply saying, I'm going to try that for mm -hmm. five days. I'm going to be, get up first thing I'm going to do before I even get out of bed. 
I'm gonna think of five things I'm grateful for and then go about my day. Yes. Yeah. And um, you know, and it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference how we see it. Yeah. You know? I, it, it really, yeah, changes us. It, it does change us. And I, I, I wanted to uh, just bring back to something you said, sort of thank you for lifting out that that word that's there, that Eucharist word in, in the Greek, which connects to our own, you know, sacraments that we practice in our worship. And um, because I just think it's so, so important because that, that sort of connects for me with the other word we use um, for that sacrament, which is communion, which is community, which is connection. And I think that that sort of posture is, is so important. Uh, like posture of Thanksgiving is one that speaks against our, um, I think, what is lifted up in our society often, which is this, you know, this the myth of the self-made person and you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And I don't, I, I didn't, you know, getting to where you're going without meeting anybody else, but actually a life of faith, a life, of uh, Thanksgiving of Eucharist is one with, that is fundamentally uh, saying that no, I I need to give thanks to God, but also to other people because we we, we can't do it on our on our on our own. Um, we we need each other. We need community, and I think that that sort of that word just really spoke to me about that, and just even this story, right, like. There's this return to and this honoring of this relationship by the Samaritan, you know, like the community is is whole by the circle the Samaritan the Samaritan makes going away and coming back, you know, like returning to to relationship. Yeah, well, it's like the the stories, um, you know, again within Luke, and I said this isn't really a story about healing, but it's a story of gratitude, and mm -hmm. you know, within Luke that that. He, that again, wellness, healing, salvation, wholeness. Mm -hmm. um, that Jesus has come into the world to bring uh, to bring people together, to mm -hmm. restore to community. That there is, you know, the the restoration is to the community, and to be a part of that is critical. Mm -hmm. um, and he's also certainly about it radically redefining what it means to be the community of God, yeah. and uh, um, and then the, this radical inclusiveness of that community. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no outsider in God's house, in God's family, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you know. And, and, and we think too. You mentioned too, man, is that like going in between this this sense, mm -hmm. um, and that remember these are the the Samaritan, these lepers are again the most alienated and isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, what this current world and this pandemic has, you know, brought to us certainly when it began back in March was this a tremendous sense that isolation and separation just got totally, completely, you know, surrounded by it, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it happened so very quickly. Mm -hmm. However, before. That before that, you know, we were undergoing a radical isolating events in our lives through technology. Mm -hmm. um, as a chaplain in the school, and being very much aware of what's going on within young people's lives, you know, we've discovered that with the rise and beginning and introduction of the iPhone in the mid early was that, about two thousand and. Five, I think, somewhere mm -hmm. around there, not that long ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 2005, that as that the, the, the use of smartphones became more widespread, you know, I, we found that te teenagers today spend more time with their parents than I did when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. They spend, teenagers who have been spending more time alone in their rooms, co connecting, I put that in parentheses, with each other through technology, but not really connecting. And there's a growing sense of alienation and isolation within their lives because of, of something that, you know, supposedly is bringing people together, but was not. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, this, uh, the COVID happened, the pandemic, and now you're not, you're forced to, you can't see your friend, you can't mm -hmm. get out and see people. 
And it's caused, I think, a lot of us to pause and reflect upon where has our life been going mm-hmm. and, and about how much we truly need community yeah. and how much we, we miss, you know, the, mm-hmm. certainly coming gathering together for our, our for the Eucharist, but also, too, as you said, the other part of that is communion, the mm-hmm. community gathering together. Um, and, and, and that we need that in our lives. Yeah. And I, I, and I think that's been a gift of this hardship we've been going through. That yes. was, uh, you know, not not universal, but I, I, I've seen in myself and in my own and the people around me this, um, yeah, this desire to, to be together, this realization that we can do, can't do it by ourselves. Um, looking out for each other and also in some ways gratitude like there just seems to be this well enough of gratitude and coming together despite being forced apart so i think that that's like a really really a really you know uh something something that I, i'm grateful for and what is a terrible situation we're in yes so yeah and i think it's okay to be grateful within terrible situations, so. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's the part of being, if you, if you were living a life of, if you understand being grateful, again, mm-hmm. call it a life of faith, a life of gratitude, you know, you know, circumstances and events happen. That's part of this, you know, it's all around us. But yeah. how we choose to respond to what's going on around us makes the difference. Mm-hmm. And we can choose bitterness or we can choose gratitude mm-hmm. you know which one is going to lead to which leads to a better life a better world a better outcome for everyone mm-hmm. um, it's not you know it's not the bitter it's not the individualism mm-hmm. um, it's not the I'm in this for myself and uh, you know you know you do your thing I'll do my thing yeah. and, uh, and that doesn't lead to that doesn't lead to wholeness it, that leads to brokenness. Mm-hmm. Um, the very opposite of what uh, you know we what what Jesus was holding up mm-hmm. uh, holding up to us. Uh, Absolutely. So uh, I was just so you know sort of talking a bit about posture and stuff. I was so interested uh, another thing that stood out to me is this this idea of turning back and and not turning back. Um, that you know the Samaritan, uh, the healed Samaritan leper did turn back, and then these others did not. And uh, uh, I anyway, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were um, about that, about turning turning back and not turning back to uh, in, in thanks to, to God to to all these things. So um, yeah, that is one of those, that question. You know, really kind of I I. I didn't, struggled with or uh, really made me think, you know, reflect deeply about my own life and mm-hmm. where, you know, what the journey that I had been under and on and on. And, and for a very long time, I knew intellectually the, the stories and the understanding of the gospel and, and, uh, and, and, and things that, you know, that we've been just here talking about. And, yeah. You know, that if I, if, if somebody said you only can have one chapter of the Bible and that's it, and you had to get rid of everything else, but then you get that with the rest of your life, I would choose Luke 15, a few before this. It's still part of the same section of Luke as Jesus' is journey to Jerusalem, but Luke 15 is it contains the three parables of the lost sheep. Mm-hmm. Um, the parable of the good woman or the lost coin, and then the parable of the prodigal son or the the good father. Mm -hmm. Because those three parables encompass a lot of what's going on here of Mm -hmm. of of the sense of of being lost and found and reaction to that event. Um, And I knew those stories, and they really were powerful to me, but it was only, it was in an intellectual sense, but I fundamentally, at my core, had not... I was still had not turned around. Yeah. I couldn't accept them for myself because of the the world in which I grew up in, and, and certainly the um, within 
the Diocese of Central Florida, where I was a priest, you know, I couldn't be who I was. That um, um, that, 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 that sexuality was an impediment. You, you know, being gay was an, you couldn't really be gay and Christian. I mean, that was the was the the belief. And so, who I was trying, you know, I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't. I could not accept the gift of God of myself, of what God had given me. I couldn't be grateful for who God created me to be because I you was know, so. So in effect, I was listening and hearing, mm-hmm. but my back was still turned. Mm-hmm. And um, through a series of events and through you know things happening, you know, uh, finally. I heard, and, it, and, and be truthful with you, that here we are in Squamish. Mm-hmm. And it really, literally was, um, I had taken uh, this visiting from Florida, and I took the Sea to Sky gondola up, and, um, and it was about this time of year, and I'm really enjoying the view. It's a beautiful, clear day. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking on the trail, and I stand on a rock, and I'm looking out at the, what, the Tantalus Range, and all of a sudden, I start to cry and laugh at the same time. Because I, in that moment, you know, it was just my soul was flooded with gratitude and realization. And so in that event, I had finally turned around. Mm-hmm. And that sense of wellness, wholeness, salvation flooded over me. And anybody that saw me, they thought, this guy is insane. Because I'm literally out loud laughing and crying at the same time. And, and so, you know, in, in a moment about three years ago, you know, I really fully turned around. Mm. And it was certainly, um, um, it was, it, I mean, it was indeed a life, it was life changing. Uh, um, and so, you know, that idea of when did you not turn, you know, like I, I had been kind of looking over my shoulder a lot, mm. <laughs> um, um, going through a lot of emotions, but, but really and finally, you know, being able to truly turn around. And, mm. and so, you know, the sense that I really could identify with this, again, this, this outside, a sense of outsiders, the sense of isolation and alienation of finally just being ended, mm. um, and uh, not that that's still to even to stay. You know, there are many people who want to continue to put you, <laughs> still want to kind of push you to the outside, but yeah. no longer realizing like it doesn't matter what you do or say. All right, you can't. Yeah, you you realize. Yeah, you, yeah. you've seen yeah. that you have been made well and whole, and that God's uh, God's healing has happened. Yeah, like, and, and, and that, that gratitude for that. Yeah. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter what I have or don't have. Because mm-hmm. you know, the fact that um, uh, it was brought to a point like materially, I was extremely well off, a lot better off than I was. You know, the the came. So, you know, I lost a lot of things. Things, mm-hmm. but the process of that too is that I also lost the burdens. You know, to, mm. you know, you said truly free experience. I can truly understand, you know. Mm. Like you said, how long, what was going on with that, that leper, and how long was he on that, the garbage dump? Mm. Um, you know, could have been a very, very long time. Yeah. Uh, I, something popped into my head about um, one of the, the Russian author Alexander Solzhenitsyn talked about, says if you ever meet anybody who is completely free of irony and free of malice, it's usually somebody who went through the worst of the, mm-hmm. the prison system and the Soviet uh, the oppression. And indeed, um, um, that is true. When, when the worst had happened to you, and you survive that over time, you develop and you just this awareness of mm-hmm. simply you know, gratitude for all and, and, and all the things that would hold us in, that would bind us, are gone. Mm-hmm. And instead, one sees the world in a sense of, you know, with simply, again, talk about too, the gratitude simply to the fact that I am able to breathe and I'm alive. Mm-hmm. 
like the gift of my breath. I believe, you know, that's certainly within the Eastern religion tradition is a sense of breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To breathe in and breathe out. Yeah. To be um, thankful for just that. Absolutely. Well, yeah, and I, I just, I really appreciate that, that sort of, that witness and testimony of your own sort of uh, wholeness and your own realization, your own turning back. And I just, uh, I so appreciate that because I think we all run into those moments of turning back. And it just, it yeah. takes different times for different people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, but when, when we do, we, it can be overwhelming, you know, like it, it is this, this, this sense of accepting the freedom we have been giving, uh, we have been given and just, uh, and, and we sort of, we have it any, either way, you know, like I think the thing I love about the story is that, you know, all those ones who didn't turn back, uh, they weren't unhealed no you know like that but there is this 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 freedom this release um in turning back in responding with thanksgiving and gratitude um and so maybe that's also part of that posture that practice of thanksgiving gratitude that that practice of stopping and turning turning back whether it's to God or to yeah. people or, you know, giving thanks for ourselves sometimes for, you know, th those things. Yeah. And, so. it, it, and you know, the, our, our lives are going to be, they're full of these moments. I mean, we have moments of where we, because we're human. Yeah. <laughs> so we're constantly turning around and like, I got this now. You know, no, 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 come back, come back. Uh, and, and so, uh, I you know maybe and I think maybe that's again what's the part of the wonderfulness of the of the Christian life of being you know a follower of God is that you know that you're gonna you're constantly going to have to you know what I mean and I mean you know I I, I one thing you know, I miss being in a sense sort of almost um, you know being in a community that doesn't have a parish an Anglican parish a place of you know, a home to worship mm -hmm. is that miss. The simple act of coming mm. to a place and and being a part of uh, a, a community and, and and being able to receive you know the bread and wine mm. you know, and, and and coming in at that that act of thanksgiving you know our, our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise mm. um, but how much we need that you know every week we need that reminder yeah. that we're coming back that every week we have to come in and you know turn around um, yeah it's part know, of that rhythm. That rhythm of turning back, of, yeah. of giving our thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And then no, I, I didn't, in the last take, we didn't talk about this, but you know, like, <laughs> I, like one of the things I, I love about you know, the old, the ancient tradition of the baptismal rite, mm. um, the candidates, you know, we ask the questions, and the candidates answer, you know, the first two questions they would face. And please forgive me. I want to believe it's the the West. Mm -hmm. And then the question is asked: Do you turn and accept Jesus? Mm -hmm. And the candidates would then physically turn around to the West, the East, the East, yeah, the East, right, the East, 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 the yeah. So there is that within the baptismal rite. We have, we still do, we still say it. Do you turn? You yeah. can imagine that physical standing and turning around. Yeah. Um, and saying yes. Mm. Good reminder to all of us, and who you know when you would witness that to see. And I almost wish that you know when I when I uh, doing especially doing an adult baptism mm. to. To, uh, to actually have them do that, to have a face one way and then to turn, and that, yeah. because they remind us all that we're constantly having, we're turning around, we're kind of drifting away, and then we get called back in and mm -hmm. turn around, you know, and that, that the, our, our worship together is that act of all that's collectively coming back in, you know, turning around and, and, uh, uh, and being gratefully and receiving, you know, the gift of God mm -hmm. that we are reminded of in our in our Eucharist and our Thanksgiving and our communion together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it, love it. And we we actually have an adult 
baptism coming up. Oh, uh, and, and, that's great. God willing, in the next month or so, so something to think about. <laughs> uh, but I actually think that's just a beautiful place to, to, to end this really wonderful and life-giving conversation for me anyway. And this even the second time around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so, right. Ken, thank you so much um, for today. Thank you. I really appreciate your thoughts and your your uh, your your wisdom and your uh, experience that you, you shared with us. Um, and so I just wonder if I could just end us with some prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the blessings in our lives. Uh, I give you thanks for your word in which we gain insight, in which we come face to face with ourselves and with you. I give you thanks for uh, Ken and his life and ministry and presence here with us today. I pray that we may all uh, cultivate a, a posture, a practice of gratitude and thanksgiving, that we may realize that we we need each other, that we need God, that we can't do it on our own. I pray that we may all encourage each other in this important work, that we may turn around and experience, and embrace this, this, this freedom, the wholeness that God gives us. And I pray all this in the name of Jesus, who is our friend and our helper. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you to join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, creator of the entire universe, too awesome for us to comprehend. We acknowledge that we need to connect with you. We believe that you hear our requests when we pray to you in community. We thank you, Lord. We pray for people of faith throughout the world, that you give your strength and guidance for your church to live out your mission in the world. We give thanks for our new future bishop, the Reverend John Stevens. Help him in this time of learning his new role in our diocese. We give thanks for the hard work and dedication of Archbishop Melissa for the past seven years. We pray especially today for Bishop Jeff Peddle of the Diocese of Eastern Newfoundland. In this week's Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Diocesan Eco-Justice Unit the Reverend Margaret Marquardt, and here at St. John's for the Reverend Cameron Guchar. We thank you, Lord. We pray with thanksgiving for a plentiful harvest 
and for our farmers who supply us with nutritious food, for the sunshine and the rain, for the mountains and the forests, the trees and animals, the rivers and the sea, for clean water and warm clothing and the shelter of our homes. We pray for those who lack these necessities of life and pray that we can all do our part to share the abundance of this rich land with all people. We thank you, Lord. We give thanks for the work of everyone involved in health care. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit and especially for those who have requested our prayers. For Jessica, Muriel, Susan, Eleanor, Lori, the House on Women's Center, the residents of Hilltop House and Shannon Falls Retirement Home, and the patients of Squamish General Hospital. We pray for Stacy Spencer as she prepares for baptism, as well as anyone else preparing for baptism or confirmation. For all who are seriously affected by the COVID-19 virus, the sick, the dying, the lonely, and the anxious, let them feel your healing presence. We thank you, Lord. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Much more to 
to us his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, or oh, thank the Lord for all. gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>